we have signed a deal with our first official sponsor, 1-2 Limited Edition Apparel. Tyshawn rocking that shirt right now. For dope people doing dope shit. Man, that little picture that I posted is a real big graphic design that's on the back of this t-shirt. Good fit, loose, long sleeve. I'm really jacking this. We need more. We need more. One, two apparel, baby. At official, period, one, two spelled out. Check them out on Instagram. Help support them, man. Dope people doing dope shit. Welcome to the Time Out with Tyshawn Taylor podcast hosted by Rock. I am Rock. He is Tyshawn. As you can see, we have a guest today. He needs no introduction, but we're going to give him one anyway. He was born in Kansas City, Missouri. Played his high school ball at Bishop Miage, where he was a two-time high school All-American. As a senior, he averaged 24 points, six rebounds, four assists per game, earning him the Eastern Kansas League and Gatorade Player of the Year awards. He then brought his talents to the University of Kansas, where he won five Big 12 regular season titles, three league tournament titles, four Sweet 16 appearances, two Elite Eights, and a Final Four run. He finished his KU career with a 158-27 and record, scored 965 points, ranked 10th all-time in games played, (laughs) and tied for 27th all-time in steals. After graduating from KU, he went on to play five years professionally all around the world, and he's kind enough to take some time with us tonight. He is none other than Travis Relliford. What's up, what's up, man? Thanks, thanks, thanks for having me, man. Boy. Thanks for having me. Appreciate yeah. you coming on, Travis. Yeah, man, no I did doubt. not know I was that close to 1,000, though. God, 965 is let crazy, me, dog. Let, me, let me go back and give me give me two more games, man. At least <laughs> I know I got some eligibility left. Like, 965 is crazy. <laughs> you right there? That's really right like four there, or five games, bro. That's a at good least. week of basketball right there to get that thousand. At least that's God. crazy. But all in all, bro, great career, man. Great, great career. Thanks. thanks. Um, being a Kansas mm-hmm. City kid, Missouri kid, I know, um, I know being close to home and being able to, you know, play your career, um, and be in your like, you know, <clears throat> your your glow, um, so to speak, um, that close to home in Kansas, putting on for the Jayhawks. I know that was dope for you. Um, for anybody that doesn't know, Travis was my roommate for the last three years of college. <laughs> Yeah. We shared the same yeah, dorm room for the yeah. last three years of college. So this is my all-time favorite teammate, hands down. It's not even close. Like, he knows yeah, me same, probably better same. than everybody. Um, we, um, shit, we just went through life together, I feel like. We grew up yeah. together. We grew up, uh, I remember. Sure. I remember. I remember getting to school early and Travis pulling up. Like, we get there in the summer and Travis pulling up with hella garbage bags. <laughs> Full of clothes and sneakers, <laughs> and having to go okay. downstairs. And this is my yeah, this is my first time meeting him. Is helping him upstairs with his shit. And I'm like, damn, dude, you got all these clothes. And I'm flying here, so I got two bags of clothes. He drove up, up whatever it is, I seventy. Forty minutes. Yeah, he 40, drove here, so he minutes. got all his sneakers. <laughs> he got to bring all his gear with I him, all his everything. his whole house with him, and we helping yeah. him upstairs and chatting it up and stuff. And so again, Travis. Uh, it's not even close, bro. My hands, hands down, my favorite teammate that I played with at KU. Um, same, bro. Same. And I'm glad. Again, I'm glad we get to, we got to get you on here. Rock introduced you, talked about your career. Um, we're gonna get mm-hmm. into some of that. I know Rock got some more questions about basketball for you, and I'll kind of just piggyback off of that. But again, thanks for coming, bro. Appreciate you. No, thanks for having me, man. When you called me, I was like, hell yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm in, man. Whatever, what time? Just let me know. Yeah, for sure, so no question. Growing I up in, that. in Kansas City, man, and going to Bishop, me age, was basketball your only sport, or did you play football, baseball? I played uh, football up until eighth grade. I uh, was what's crazy. I'm, I had this in my book. Football was my favorite sport growing up as a kid, and I only played basketball to stay in shape for football. Yeah. And uh, 
I broke both of my collarbones, seventh, eighth grade year, back to back, left, right. And uh, I grew like five inches after my second break. And I just, I was like, hey, I probably should just stick with ba- with basketball. Let me go ahead, you know. Bro, you broke your collar. My, you broke the collarbones playing football. Broke both of my collarbones playing football. Uh, one year I was playing quarterback, the other year I was playing tight end. Well, and uh, exactly why I did yeah. that shit. <laughs> yeah, so I was just like, uh, both collarbones, my neck will be next. So I was just like, let me just go ahead and put all my focus into basketball and then grew a few inches. And after that, my my hype around basketball just took off after that. Yeah. So when you were going through like high school, did you know like KU's my spot? That's where I want to go? Uh, early on, I, I honestly didn't have any idea because I was, I was going to school and I had a lot of like attention going into my freshman year, especially being in Kansas city. Uh, I think the, the next biggest name after me was, was B rush. So we got, we got years in between. So I'm the next guy up in the city. So everybody, all the hype around that. And, uh, KU's always been in the back pocket because they're down the street. So you, you can't, you know, not have KU in, in an option when you're being looked at by all the schools. He said so. KU was in the back pocket. Is crazy. I know, right? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's right. It's right. Literally right down the street. You got to understand. Like, right down the street. I, yeah, I, no. I, you I know, see. they watching you close and you know what's exactly. going on over there, too. So, I feel yeah, you. Yeah, it was, it, it, it just came down to just being home. Uh, we didn't have the NIL rule. So my family couldn't afford to fly cross country to come see me so and, and what better place to you know have a career nah, hell yeah. was it a easy it was pretty easy decision for you you didn't have to go back and forth with other schools no no i didn't visits? i actually i didn't take any visits man i i knew I, like, like i listened to a few coaches you know blow smoke and mm-hmm. just like oh yeah you can do this but i i knew i'm just like i'm staying home and then i looked at the team that that they had at ku at already all these guys are older and I'm thinking, like, hey, I'm going to go there and, you know, be the local guy, go ahead and be the star early on in my career. And, uh, you know, that panned out later lie, on. Bro, I think, I think, I think we all thought that. I think, yeah. I think when I, I, when I first seen your name on the roster, not just not having no real history, knowing who you was, but they told me you was from there. So I started doing my research and talking to my partners and stuff. And they like, yeah, well, if he a Kansas City kid and he like that, they gonna fuck with him because why yeah. wouldn't you know what I'm saying? Why wouldn't they? You yeah, know what I no, mean? 100%. Like so don't Yeah, like don't go there and he play the same position as you and him being from there and all that. Like they was on that. Like if he no, played the same no, position, 100%. like 100%. <laughs> and that's why <clears throat> that's why I had to do my research. Like, wait, I can't compete with a nigga that's a freshman. At the same time I'm yeah, a freshman. And he yeah. from there and he yeah. pretty sure ranked higher in the top one hundred. I'm like, nah. I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. But once I looked at the roster and I just seen all of us incoming and I just seen how it was so spread out, I'm like, Oh, this could work. Like and maybe not mm-hmm. right away, but eventually this yeah. could work. You know what I mean? Yeah, 100%. And um again, I shit, I'm happy I'm happy you came. Um uh, I'm happy you was there. No, I no, I'm happy. I'm, I'm happy I I uh, picked Kansas, and I'm happy I stayed because, you know, you know, it was yeah. a time where it's just like, man, I should go somewhere this else. Or, yeah, this time. You know, sitting out that red shirt year with all the talent that I had because I felt like, you know, I could have played early on, but you know how Coach Self is. He got to have that trust in you at a young You're age. You're the first person that not, came you know, on here. somebody out there you can trust. You're the first person that came on here that actually knew for sure they was going to Kansas, like, Everybody else, like I had Mario Chalmers, I had Rio Little, um, even my story. We had mm-hmm. Sharon. We all was Sharon. like going to different schools. Kansas is just kind of like came up. Like we, like Mario. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what Mario. His shit was some something. I know you know Little, Rio Little. He out of JUCO. He was going to like Illinois or maybe even trying to enter the draft. Um, mm-hmm. Chalmers wanted Sharon, to go to North Carolina. Sure was, yeah, Mario was North Carolina, Sharon was Illinois or something like that. Like, so we all had you the only you the first person, and I guess that's not surprising. You being a Kansas kid, it makes more sense. Like, yeah. um, you just knowing the history, understanding those type of rivalries and and mm-hmm. shit like that. Um, so yeah, that's dope, man. That's dope. I could imagine. Like, I know 
when I got my first letter from like St. John's and like Rutgers as a kid, I was hyped because I'm like, oh shit, I, could, I got the potential to just yeah. stay home and <laughs> for sure. one, put on for the city, for two, like have all my games in the area that's home. I was hyped. Mm-hmm. And if Rutgers was Kansas, I would have definitely stayed home if, you, if that makes yeah. sense. You know what I mean? Like, but it's Rutgers. So no, no, no offense to Rutgers, but like at the time, they no, just no, wasn't. No, no, 100%. Like, yeah, and I, it was in a big I remember, so. I mean, <clears throat> Okay, you wasn't my first letter. It was from Wichita State, and I'm telling you, man, I, I was high. Yeah. I had a letter sitting on my my uh, nightstand. It was the hypest moment ever for me, you know. Yeah, it felt good at getting the time, I, from the crib. Yeah, man. Like as a kid, you hooping, and then like, oh man, I want to go to school and play. You get that first letter, you like, you know, you don't even care what it say. You just like, oh, this is Wichita State. Hell yeah. Big shout out to them. I don't know who the coach was at the time, but. Uh, that just made me want to just work even harder. I'm like, oh, I want to get more letters, you know? All right. Because I don't, right. I don't know about you, but I used to, I used to stack all my letters up in like shoe boxes and stuff. Bro, I was thinking them. about like, this shit got... the other day. I talked to one of my <laughs> high school teammates, uh, Gio Fontaine, who is probably going to be one of my guests on here pretty soon. Actually, he went to USC, and I remember staying at his house and him having he slept on a bunk bed and him having all his letters yeah. like underneath. The bed, like you know how the little bunk bed got the mattress on the top bunk, yep. and you got the bars in between uh-huh. the bars, and he just like sleeping, looking at that shit every night. And I saved my all my mom was just like in the trunk. I had so many, bro. Like I had, yeah, yeah same. So same. Many, I had two man, tubs, bro. two tubs, maybe yeah, two tubs stacked. Like, I was thinking if my mom got, saved any of my letters the other day when I was talking to bro because we was talking about that, but I had so many letters, bro. It was crazy. It got ridiculous after a while. I stopped like even caring. Exactly. You stop opening them after a while, but like, yeah, you those get first that, few, you get that first few, you like you, those I, you first put those few, to the side. Bro. It don't even matter who they from, you know. You <laughs> see somebody, then my, my high school coach would tell me like, yo, when they sign their handwritten thank you or their handwritten name, those are the ones that really like you. So I start opening them up. And if the mm-hmm. if the coach didn't hand write his signature or hand write thank you, I, I closed it right. I ain't even like he ain't fuck with me. He sent this to everybody. Like they said, this to everybody. I ain't fuck with you. He said this to everybody. Exactly. Uh, last weekend, one of our former teammates, uh, Thomas Robinson, got his jersey retired, and I was in attendance for that. I know you were supposed to be, but uh, one mm-hmm. of the little babies got sick. Um, yep, I hope yep. you're doing better. But that was a moment that I know you you for sure would have enjoyed, just because for one, you played with T. Rob. Um, you mm-hmm. seen him when he came in. You seen him when he left. Um, you seen yep, all he yep. went through while he was here. Um, so I know you would have appreciated that moment and felt almost part of it in a sense because of those short stint of time, that two years that he was here, you was his teammate. Mm-hmm. You, 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 had, you had a lot to do with um, his development, his mindset, um, and all of that. And he gave us a shout-out. He thanked us, specifically the 2012 team, um, mm-hmm. in his thing. And I happened to be there, so he said my name, but he was talking to all of us when he said um, – Yep, yep. how that year changed his life like him him being able to be himself but trusting us enough to have his back made him the player that he was that year and I thought that was pretty dope um and again like I said we wish you would have been there but do you have anything to say about for one he got that we we'll get, we'll get back to this but he got that jersey retired mm-hmm. versus Missouri so we'll get back to that, yeah. you being the KC kid and that rivalry and stuff like it. that. But just speak it. on um, how dope it is to see one of your former teammates. I know we got a couple now. We got Cole, we got Sharon, T-Rob, mm-hmm. and we got Marcus. So we got four teammates that got their jersey retired. So that's pretty yeah. dope um, to be a part of that. But T-Rob specifically for me was a little bit more, you know, because I feel like I had my best year the same year he had his best year. So we were like uh-huh. kind of one and two in that situation. And so I felt – really really a part of that in a sense and so speak to just speak to that how proud we are of him and you know your personal feelings about that no no super proud man i, I did a little video and just just tell him man i'm so happy that i was just like a small part of that so like being able to go to allen Field house now and see that jersey up there t rob uh and actually that was like my breakout year because i've been like sitting on the bench yeah. you know coming in you and out playing like you know not, that, yeah yeah, not playing, not playing significant like minutes, and then the year I was my sophomore year, I I ended up getting hurt, messing up my ankle. I don't know if you remember that, and mm-hmm. uh, that kind of put me back again. So my junior year, 
uh, T. Rob sophomore year. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that was that, that was a, that was a hell of a year, man. That was a fun team to be a part of because outside of the court or off the court, we 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 stuck together, man. It was just like you yeah. never just saw one of us by ourselves. Like it was always two, three, four of us at a time. Like that's how close bonded that team was, and I think because of how close we were, that that took us beyond and got T. Rob over all the stuff that he had went through. Uh, and took us that, that we, I mean, we carried each other all the way to the final yeah, four. Yeah, man. We, was, we, we overachieved in the eyes of a he, lot of people. He was, but, man, he was scoring. Uh, T Rob, he had to. Huh? I said we overachieved in the eyes of a lot of people, but we know how good we were, how hard we fought every day. We know how important having Jamari and Ben on that team practicing against us every like we. Everything that went 100%. into us being as good as we was, we knew that. But I don't feel like a lot of people seen that or knew that outside of that, which no made idea. it even better for us. No idea. No idea. And then they don't understand the whole years that I wasn't playing, who I was playing against till my time came. So it wasn't like, oh, you know, like yeah. this guy, we might be okay. Like that was supposed to be our like down year or something like that, they were saying. But, yeah. man, it was it was a fun run. and. With T. Rob seeing his development as a freshman, him coming right. in, right. having to sit the bench, and we at the time we're like, man, we got a, we got who who at the time was sitting the bench? It was him, uh, Jeff Elijah. Whitney, uh Elijah. We had four or five pros sitting on the bench on the red team, you know, like yeah. So we, <laughs> we knew what we had coming into that year, and when we all got our chance, it, it we just. We knew, we knew, like, we just, we're going to prove to ourselves what we already know, you know? For sure, for sure. I, um, Rock, you back on here, bro? I'm back. I'm back. Just enjoying the story. All right, man. I know you got some questions for Trav. Uh, for, yeah, I, I know you had some questions for Trav. I had uh, asked him about T-Rob Jersey retirement. I know you probably got some personal questions about just his his individual career um, and and shit like that, so I'll let you get back to your host part of this thing. No, man, this one's next for both of you guys. This is about to be story time, so I want to read you guys up real quick. Just okay, follow, along, follow along with me real quick. So I seen this posted the other day, and it Let's really it. made me think about you guys, but it says, I'm taking a couple of drunk teammates home. I'm showing off. Come around a corner. I tried to do this e-brake Tokyo drift thing. I lose control. Now I'm doing donuts in the middle of the street at 2 a.m. I hit the curb, bounce over it, hit three street signs, and land in the other lane facing the wrong way. The police officer shows up, and one of the girls in my car is talking to him. Finally, he comes up and says, I know it was a mistake. I'll make sure you don't get in any trouble. I just need one favor. I want two autographed Crosby cards. So I run into Crosby's room, grab the cards, a marker from his desk, shake him awake. I managed to revive him enough, and I said, hey, I need you to sign these cards. you got to sign them. He scribbles his name half asleep. I go give them to the cop, and it's done. The next morning, Crosby comes down for breakfast, and he's got marker ink all over his face and his chest everywhere, and he thinks we pranked him. And so he gets even more mad when I tell him the real story of what really happened. And so that was from uh, Max, Sidney Crosby's junior hockey teammate, roommate, right? So since you guys were roommates and we passed the statute of limitation on most of the laws in Lawrence, Kansas. Wait, let's his hear some junior stories high about school, Travis Sidney his high school. junior high <laughs> Junior hockey, junior hockey. That was so from know, Sidney not Crosby's hockey guy, junior so high teammate. Old. Yeah. His rookie, his junior junior God. hockey roommate. These niggas is drunk said. driving. So I don't know what age. In eighth grade, I don't know, I know what right? age that was. I don't know what age that was, but they so, wilding out in Canada. Where the fuck they play? They in Canada. Trap. Yeah, they, okay, they get... I'm glad you said. Okay, this is perfect. Speaking of <laughs> hockey, so, in Canada, this is a perfect segue. It's a perfect segue. Yeah, it is. It is. It's a perfect segue. That was our first. That was our first. You know, outing. That was our first. That was like, our first time like together. hanging out together. This is a perfect segue. Yeah, so perfect. I don't actually know if Sidney Crosby is from Canada. I just said that in reference of like hockey and it being a big sport. So and with the story time, me and Travis, I only we actually weren't even roommates at this time. We just were no, no, freshmen. We, were, we just were yeah. young together. I had the other tie, 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 tie Appleton. Tie Appleton. Shout out to Ty. That was my, that was my first roommate. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so we um, 
we have a preseason tournament in Canada and like Quebec or Mont. It wasn't Toronto. It was like Quebec or like Montreal, Mont, some, some, something. It was like a small. We was in Ottawa. We was in Ottawa. Ottawa. Yep, we went yeah, Ottawa. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I remember. So we went in Ottawa and we play a couple of like exhibition games and mm-hmm. we are about to go home the next day. We're out. We got. I'm balled out too, by the way. I don't, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm balled out over in Canada. <laughs> Yeah, you played good, huh? I don't know if you remember that. <laughs> I just remember, I remember the Twins not playing. I don't know playing. if you remember that, but I. <laughs> I don't remember how good, I don't remember how good you played, but I remember the Twins not playing and everybody coming back feeling very confident about them not playing. Like, we felt very good about where we were. Like, I remember that. Like, yeah. Coach was like, oh, we're fine. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this was his first time seeing a bunch of, like, all of us play. And I remember him coming yeah. back feeling okay about what we had done. I don't remember how everybody played. I don't even remember how I played. I just remember him yeah. feeling, like, confident in us. Um, But I believe it, though. I believe it. You had a lot of confidence all yeah, that time. No. You, you, uh, Again, you young. You coming out. coming from from coming from high school, being a man. I'm pretty sure you ranked mm-hmm. higher than all of us coming out of high school. Me, except for maybe Marcus. Marcus might, might have been higher. But me, Keith, uh, Quintrell was the other freshman at the time. And then you had Mario and T.A. Mm-hmm. coming from – you you were the you were the you know, the one that people were talking about, and then for we sure, just in Kansas, sure. so everybody known you. We'll get to that too. Yeah. Um, just about like mm-hmm. off the court shit. Like when I came to Kansas, talking about Travis, and that's my roommate. Like how all of the girls reacted to that because you were the man, <laughs> and they heard about you from when they when you played against their high school over there, and you know what I'm saying. Yeah, so now all of the girls that's sure. in school with us, like that's that's they know who they you all are went to different high schools. Anyway, but let's just yeah, get back to this. Sure. Canada story. So we go to Canada. <laughs> we went. We went a couple games. We come back to the hotel. We get dressed. We go out to eat. Um, we got time. We don't have nothing to do. We don't have like a real curfew or anything. We just kind of free. So we go into this little club. Now in Canada, it was like night. I think it was nineteen, right? You can get yeah, into the club. Yeah, nineteen was age. It was like nineteen to get in the club and drink and stuff. Me, Travis, and the other freshman yeah. Quintrell Thomas are all eighteen. It was nineteen or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, we're all eighteen at the no. time. So we showing our IDs and they not letting us in. And wh- I remember while we at on the line, there's a guy like, "Oh, you guys can come with us. I'll get you guys in this place. Don't worry about it." Or whatever. <laughs> oh, I know where this is going. So <laughs> we follow this guy. We don't know who this guy is. And I'm going to tell you what I was thinking. Mm. I'll let Travis speak for himself. I'm going to tell you what I'm thinking. I'm with Travis and Quintrell's bigger than both of us. Quintrell was like 6'8". Yeah. Big. And I'm just like, "Man, yeah." This little white guy, like, it was like a little-ass white dude. Like, he was, like, uppity and shit, but I wasn't threatened. I didn't feel threatened. Yeah. So I'm like, all right. No, no good. threat at we all. Out. I'm like, we uh-huh. out. So we jump in, like, a cab with this guy. We're driving. This is when it starts getting sketchy. Because we drive it, mm-hmm. and then it just go. it gets dark. Like, we driving over, like, a bridge or yep. something. We driving over, like, a bridge. It was, like, 40 we minutes. Did, we were, like, 40 minutes away from where we were at. We too. were not like close. It was, it we were driving for away. a while. And then as it started to get dark, I'm like, oh, shit. And then I remember, like, a bridge. And once we get over the bridge, I was just kind of seeing some lights in the distance. And we pull up to a strip club. It was, like, an 18 and over strip yep. club. <laughs> mm-hmm. Now this is definitely oh my, my gosh, first. Dude. This is definitely my first time at any strip club ever. <laughs> my very first time, ever in my life, and I'm happy to be the in very Canada. first time. So I don't know the rules. I don't know the policies. I don't know nothing. We just step in there. We oh damn. We just I, well be again. I'm speaking to myself. I'll let Trav, yep. you know, rebuttal yep. all of this. But I walk in there. I'm happy. Green nose wide open. Like oh my god, this is amazing. <clears throat> Now, we in there for probably 10 minutes. A girl come up to me and asked me if I want to dance. I said yes. She takes me takes me downstairs <laughs> to the private dance room. Mm-hmm. Now, I stay down there for two hours getting dances. <laughs> two hours. I'm just in there we having have... the time of my life. I'm down there for two hours. <laughs> she oh finally stands up and goes, yeah, that's 30 songs. You owe me like seven, eight hundred dollars or something. I was like, wait, what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I was like, wait, what? I was like, I got two hundred and fifty dollars on me. I was like, I got two hundred and fifty dollars. That's what supposed do you mean? to last me the whole trip. <laughs> yeah, I was like, what do you mean? Exactly. Six hundred, eight hundred dollars. She's like, Yeah, it's like fifty dollars a song. That was like twenty five <laughs> songs or some shit. I was like, yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Bro, I'm yeah, like, oh so my now gosh. You, you tell- 
So I got to call. I call them. Like, yo, I'm downstairs and they not letting me out, bro. Like, I, I don't know what to do. Like, they're not going to let me leave. Like, I owe these people money. And so I'm like, yo, yo, you got any bread? Travis, like, bro, I got like $150, $100, something like that. My man Quintrell had like $300. He was like, yeah, I got like $300, but I'm yeah. only going to give you $100. I was like, damn, bro, you're not even going to help me out. He's like, no, I'm going to yeah. give you $100. Anyway, we didn't have enough anyway. I don't even know how we got out of there. I'm pretty sure the dude who we was there, like, let us argue about it for a little while, then finally just, like, paid yeah. the rest of it. But, bro, we were not about to leave. Like, they were not letting us leave. No. We were about yeah, to be stuck in Canada. Not. Well, hold on, hold on. They weren't letting you leave. <laughs> we wasn't going to leave without you. <laughs> yeah, I was stuck. And my friend was there with me Yo, looking so at me like, bro, like, what? I had no so idea. The, Do you, so you remember our, that, my right? Side, my side of, of the story. Do. So we go we go in. Tyshawn dips off. He go go get his private dances and stuff. So we're all upstairs. We're sticking together, hanging out, just, you know, enjoying the scenery. Uh, nobody's getting any dances. We're just, you know, happy to be there, happy to be outside our uh, our hotel. So we're we're sitting there. Time go by. Hour go by. we like, what's what, what Somebody check on Ty, man. I, I, somebody they might have kidnapped him. We over there just like nobody heard from him. I think we were texting him at the time, and then of course he was he was occupied. He was getting to dance, so he wasn't looking at his phone. So we like, man, he's not texting us back. What's going on? So we we upstairs just like worried, stressing out, like man, we don't know what to do. We don't, we don't know what to tell coach. <laughs> right, how are we gonna explain this one? <laughs> how are we gonna explain this one? So and then he finally, you know, come up like, hey. I need some help, man. I need to go ahead and get this money or or however much it was. And uh and like you said, Quintrell was like, nah man, I'm not I'm not giving my giving my money away. I'm like, Ty, that's all I got, man. You can have it. Like we gotta we gotta get out of it. Let's get back. I'm like seeing the seeing how angry the guy was, the girl was like, No, nah, he owed me money. I ain't going nowhere until I get all my money and we, we you know, we Grabbing our pockets, we don't got the nil money at the time, so right. We were like, "Yo, how the hell are we gonna get out of this?" <laughs> so we, like, like Ty said, we was arguing back and forth, like, "Hey, this is all we got, you know, take it or leave it." And then that finally came down, and it was just like, "Bro, Ty, how didn't you know you was down there getting paid <laughs> or getting charged every dance, bro? Like, how don't you know these things?" <laughs> it's like this is my first time at the strip club. <laughs> bro, it was oh. the whole drive back, man. It was it, that was probably the highlight of that trip right there. So he did mention, I think in season one, we were talking, having story time, and he mentioned at time talking about getting kidnapped, where you uh, got suckered in by the younger guys <laughs> to play some video games. And next thing you know, Tyshawn said him and T Rob and everybody started getting ransom messages that they done had you tied up in a chair holding you for ransom. Is yeah. that some truth to that story? Yep, 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 yeah, yeah, man. It it's all true, but it didn't they didn't they didn't sucker me in to come play video games. I was always I always did a lot of standing alone. <clears throat> so I roamed, I'll I'll go off, wonder by myself. And during that whole season, a year or whatever, we would always have the upperclassmen jump on the younger the younger guys and like it was a back and forth thing all season and i was by myself with the younger guys you know going over to to the towers and i'm i'm always talking shit like when we're practicing i'm talking shit outside of the court i was talking shit and i'm playing video games with them like i know my guys got my back so i'm, I'm over to popping off like y'all ain't y'all ain't shit y'all ain't gonna do nothing to me whatever <laughs> next thing you know they start plotting locking the door, grabbing tape. I'm still playing my game thinking nothing of it. Next thing you know, <laughs> they, they, you know, they grab me, put me in the chair, take me to the chair, start sending videos to the guys, and uh, and that's pretty much how it was. But long story short, the videos got to them within like five, ten minutes. T-Rob, you know, everybody know how strong he is. Kick down the door. <laughs> Who had, I don't even know who had the fire extinguisher. How you let yourself get wrapped up like that, though? How you let these niggas tape Bro, you? It was like eight of them. The, it was eight of them. To a fucking like chair. I'll never, T Rob, yeah. we go knock on Bro. the door. We knock on the door. They crack the door open. And like, like we looking in there. Now, T Rob getting real strong. He trying to push his way in. But like Travis said, it was like eight of them. So they slammed the door back. Yeah, it's like. 
Now we go back and we knocking again. They crack the door again. This is when T Rob get the bright idea to stick the fucking holes from the um the fire extinguisher. <laughs> the fire fire extinguisher, fire extinguisher yeah. in the in the door. Yeah. So we did that like twice. Boom, 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 and crack the door. Yeah, y'all, y'all not getting in, y'all not getting in. Slammed it on us. Knock knock knock. Open it. Y'all not getting in, y'all not getting in. Crack the third time, this nigga grabs the fire extinguisher that's on the hallway next to the room. He grabs it. Mm-hmm. He sticks his hand and he sticks it in there. And when they open, he like, watch this. Knock, knock, knock. They open it, crack the door. He sticks the fire extinguisher in there and just goes like this. Everywhere. He just maxed the whole out, room. bro. He just pressed the shit. He yeah. just maxed. The whole room. The, the and all whole I remember, room turned white. <laughs> All I remember is these niggas coughing hella hard and rolling out of the room, like rolling. Yeah. And Travis was taped to a chair. He couldn't even get out. <laughs> he in the room get like, out, man. Oh, man. Oh, they, my they got me good. I, I, I can't, can't even deny it, but I, I put myself in that position. That was one of the funniest uh, things we ever and, been through. And that. Yeah, that, that probably, that, yeah, hands down. Hey, but like you said, my guys have my back. Hold, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I gotta, I gotta talk to Trav about um, this Missouri KU thing. I know you a Kansas City kid growing up, all of that. Like, I'm, I'm not sure if that was something that was like big in a household. If you got siblings or family that Missouri fans, or you might got a cousin that played basketball or football from Missouri or something. What type? What what does that mean to you mm-hmm. personally? And then just being a part of it, you know, for those five years or four, I guess four years, um, you were able to be a part of it, and yeah. then us winning that last game the way we did. Like, how 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 do you feel about that? Have you ever, you know, watched that game again since you played in it, or like, like just the just the feeling of of that rivalry? Uh well, being a Missouri kid, you always hear Mizzou, Mizzou. Uh, <clears throat> They had what uh, <clears throat> one of the one of the Rush brothers went there, mm-hmm. and so I, and again I'm young. I'm looking up to all the Rush brothers, you know, UCLA, uh, Mizzou, KU. You know, seeing it, seeing those guys' success. Uh, yeah, no. So that game meant a lot, you know. Being able to be from Mizzou, I mean, be from KU. I mean. Huh. Being, being able to be from Missouri, Missouri kid playing for a Kansas school and then competing all five years. Also had teammates that played for uh, Missouri. They they played on my AAU team, Marcus Demon, right. Mike Dixon, right. Right. Uh, Steve Moore. All those guys I, I like I knew. Like we all we been to war and back together in that on the AAU circuit. So it was no hate towards like the players, but once you yeah. find out like the history and you, you you see the the backstory on like yeah, way back when them. and why the hate is there, bro. Like yeah. you you don't need no like pregame speech to go out there and play in that game. Like All I'm right. getting the chills right now talking about it because I I mean like if we were to play them all, like I'll be ready because that's right. how it was. Like you don't you don't need no pregame talk for this. Like they show you the history and why the 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 hatred is. Is between like the schools and the state, and you just get out there and you want to do everything you can to make sure, you know, you get that win for everybody to support the Jayhawks. Right. And do you then guys one more remember last question before, kind of like some of the Rock some of the talks were running away with his No, so I was just wanted to keep going on the Missouri thing. Do you guys remember during that game, like some of the talks in the huddle from either coaches, other players? Like, obviously the big comeback. We know how it ends. Like it should, right? But in I've, that moment, I remember when you guys are down that much. Like, what was that? What was that like for you guys? Because I mean, honestly, how many times have you guys been down that many points in Allen Fieldhouse? Probably never. Yeah, nah, we, I mean, sure. we, we came. Yeah, we came back a, from a lot. Like, like that season, a lot of the victories we had were comeback victories. But mm-hmm. I don't remember yeah. a margin that big, and I don't remember a margin. That big in the field house, like damn near ever. But I did also you guys remember feel any, vividly. Did you feel any pressure? Yeah, that was for no, a not really. Not 
Yeah, that too. But we all, like, I don't know, if just speaking for me, I always, even when we was down 18, I felt like we was going to win that game. Like, oh, yeah, for one, yeah, we yeah, knew sure. that they weren't going to shoot shoot as good as they did the first half. Mm, we knew that, that they're going to come down to reality a little bit. <laughs> and we just like, no, we in Allen Fieldhouse. We don't lose here. Like, no, we that was, that was my whole thing, so, bro. Ain't no stop, way stop, we Stop looking at the here. score. Stop looking at the score and let's just go hoop. And that's what we did. We talked to each other in the huddle like, hey, don't look at the score, Coach Self. Hey, don't look at the score. Let's go out there and play ball. The score is going to take care of itself. Next thing you know, we're we're eight points away with, with four minutes left. And this, and that's a, a whole a ball that's game a bat, I was like, oh, shit. <laughs> you look up and you down <laughs> eight with four minutes. Point. Oh, we trained for this. Four, we got yeah. two minute drills yeah, yeah, and all yeah. type of shit. Like, yep. like we we be yeah. we position. Yeah. We have practices that we just work on situations where you're down seven yeah. with yeah. a minute left. What mm-hmm. are you what are you gonna do? Like yeah. you you up exactly. five with three minutes left. What are you gonna do? Like exactly. we practice situations like that. Mm-hmm. So you look up and yeah. you down five all with the two time. minutes left. All oh, the you time. Like, oh shit! Oh, yeah. they fucked up. Yeah. We 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 said we took a deep breath and like oh this they they let us back in it's it's over for them we knew we knew when we got it down to single digits we was gonna win that game for sure it was too much we never time thought we was gonna we... lose but when we yeah when we saw double, single digits way too much time on the clock I remember looking at Travis one time asking him what play Coach Self just called because I couldn't hear him and Travis was like yeah. he said this he said something I was like. I, Oh, all right. And I'm bringing the ball up the court, looking up the court. I'm not even looking at dude. I'm looking at Travis. Like, what do you say? Yeah, I can't even hear you him. Like, shit you couldn't is hear. loud in you there. You couldn't hear. I would say, like, the, uh, wouldn't you agree, like, the last four minutes of the game, we probably was just playing without it. Coach, hearing any calls from Coach. Like, we no, were just out again, there. Like, we, again, the situation practices, bro. Like, we don't even yeah. got to look at him. Unless he call a timeout yeah. and he want us something exactly. specific. We know what to do in every one of these situations. And to be completely honest, mm-hmm. we ran the same play the last seven possessions of the game. The same play. <laughs> the same to talk play. About. Just get a different option yeah. every time. Just yeah. get the open we, option we every time. We hit all time. our options, too. We hit every one of them. We got the back door. We got the yep. handoff to the, the drive, to the, the dump off. off. The back screen we, on the other side. And the back screen three. We the, yeah. I'm like, oh, my yeah, God. He sure. a mad scientist when it comes to shit like that. But, yeah, never yeah. panic in those situations, bro. And, again, we have been there. We knew what we was playing for. We knew who we was playing against. Um, mm-hmm. So it, it it really meant something. Um, it really meant something. I think, just, I think just the whole history behind that KU – uh, Missouri rivalry, them going to the big uh, uh, SEC that year, it supposedly yeah. being the last time that we were going to play against each other in that setting, um, made that game so much better. So much better to play in, so much better to win. Mm-hmm. I'll never forget yeah. it. I watched that shit like 10 times since I played mm-hmm. in it on like YouTube or something like that. Like it was, it's, <laughs> ridic- it's a ridiculous game. It's still probably one of the best yeah. games I've played in. I sometimes... I don't know, like not sometime thinking about it, but when I'm thinking about basketball, and I think about that game specifically. I, I don't. It, it's surprising how we won it because they were so yeah. they were hitting everything. T. Rob was in foul trouble. Couldn't Jeff miss. was hurt early. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like it was just everything was going wrong for so long Couldn't in that miss. game, and we just figured it out. And yeah. that, I mean, that's who we were all year. That's who we were all year. Um, mm-hmm. And again, before Rock gets on his whatever he got to say next. I want to talk about moving forward. That was one of our last games before we made that run into the NCAA tournament, which ended up mm-hmm. being a national championship run. Um, I always say you and Elijah, obviously Jeff defensively, but you and Elijah were our better players throughout the six games that we played because I didn't play good until North Carolina, and I didn't play good after that. So I didn't play good until mm-hmm. North Carolina, which is like the fourth game. And I don't think I had another good game after that. Like, in my mind the whole time, I'm doing enough to get drafted. I wanted yeah. to win, and I wanted to play good, but we winning, and I'm they able to see me again. You know what I mean? And so mm-hmm. I I just know, I like, I was playing really good, and then we got to the tournament, and I didn't shoot it that well. Shit was happening, but we were winning games. But I always say that you and Elijah offensively, you know, made big shot after big shot or big play after big play when me and T-Rob didn't have things going. Obviously, T-Rob didn't have to score the ball to be effective, like, he, he'll get he'll get Rebound, 17 rebounds, defend. you know what I mean? Yeah, Block some shots yeah. and shit like that. But me specifically, mm-hmm. like, 
<clears throat> my energy is there and running the team. But if I'm not scoring or making plays, it almost looks bad in a sense. And so just me not having the couple of good games that I had and then watching Elijah hit big shots or making plays and then you defending, guarding motherfuckers like Harrison Barnes and all type mm-hmm. of people you had to guard because you were our guy to do that that year. Um, how how did you feel going through that, that Final Four national championship run? Uh, being a part of that. Well, you know, going into that whole year, it was just like, you know, this is my time, you know, like mm-hmm. <clears throat> sitting out, not playing as much as I would have liked the years before. Every game I went out there with a chip on my shoulder. Like, I don't know if you noticed that, but you probably Hell did with, yeah. with my play. Like, Coach Self didn't have to tell me that I was guarding the best player. He never had to tell me. I knew, like, that's the, the challenge I wanted to take on. On top of that, like, as far as scoring, I was uh, built a lot of confidence over the years being on the red team because I got to, you know, play against you guys, shoot all the crazy shots I wanted to. So all that stuff just carried on. Like a lot of kids don't do that now because you can transfer, but I think that red shirt year was the one of my best years as far as like improvement. I had <clears throat> got stronger, built a lot of confidence. And my shot got a lot better. Mm-hmm. And like Todd said, making big shots. Uh, and it was, I was, was just ready for like that just moment. Big play, yeah, just big plays, yeah. bro. Like, I was just and again, ready for it. it's not shit that's gonna jump off the stat sheet. But yeah. if you watch those games or just understand who we were as a team, you could see that. Well, I wasn't playing good. That was obvious. But even T. Rob, mm-hmm. like he would have numbers. He'll finish with like seventeen to ten, but he took in fifteen shots. Or yeah. you know what I'm saying? So it was just like he was getting numbers, but we knew he wasn't playing great. In those games, mm-hmm. like we played against Purdue, or when we played against NC State, or when we played mm-hmm. against even Ohio State, like it yeah, wasn't yeah. like we played great games, like as the best players on the team, we didn't play great. And so people talked about how how undeep that team was, but yeah. our top six or seven could have played with anybody that year. Maybe after that, yeah. it got dark, but our it, top it, six. With Connor coming in, shooting the basketball the way he was able to, you guarding people and then having no spurts offensively that you had and when mm-hmm. we needed, Elijah just being, like, consistent. He was so consistent that year. Like, me and T-Rob yeah. was all – like, T-Rob was – T-Rob was like this. I, I did pretty well for the most part. But that was the most steady and balanced that I've seen Elijah play ever. Like, mm-hmm. consistently over games. Like, every game you can depend on him to be – Solid yeah. for the most part, and hundred uh, percent, and and then Jeff, obviously Jeff having that anchor back there. Oh my God, that mm-hmm. was huge. Ky with those spurts of energy, those spurts of minutes when T Rob would get in foul trouble, or if T Rob just needed a minute to get his head together, and then we got K Rob, Ky coming in with these spurts of energy, getting putbacks yep. and offensive rebounds yep. and shit. It was like perfect. Yep. It was like a puzzle, and every piece just kind of fit perfectly everybody did their own thing but together it was like okay we got some here and i knew yeah that it was shit it was one of those situ- it season. was one of those situations where everybody knew their role and they played it well like everybody knew exactly nobody what they were supposed to do. stepped out stepped out of that out of their boundaries like i knew i was gonna go in and shut down whoever the top scorer was you didn't have to run the play for me to go get 12 15 like right. you said a game wide breakout get 20 plus like it, we just knew, Kevin, come off the bench, be that spark, be that Huge guy. Points. Like, everybody knew they wrote. Like, we knew Tyshawn and T-Rob was go, are our leader scores. We're going to look look for them, ride ride that wave, and if they don't got anything going, hey, I got to step it up. Elijah got to right. step it up. And right. and that's what, that's what got us over that, you know, got us through that whole season. It's so crazy because – <clears throat> I always talk about how that 2010 team was just so good. We, it was the best team I ever played on. And then it was like so many good niggas on that team. You got to red shirt certain people and yeah. then certain people not happy with their playing time. Mm-hmm. Certain people like me thinking I got to do more. So I'm trying to step out of the role that he given me because I'm thinking I, if I do a little mm-hmm. bit more, I'm going to go to the NBA. You know what I'm saying? And then you think about yeah. Fast forward two years later when you don't got as much talented people, but everybody is, knows the expectation for themselves and it worked perfectly. And it's almost, I say that to say, it's almost a good thing 
in a sense to not have such a talented fucking team so much because I remember that 2010 yeah. team just being so good. Like you and Mario having a red shirt, X and Sharon thinking yeah. that it's their team. And so them playing good, but in moments where we really needed them to be on the same page, they weren't because they wanted to do their own thing and shit like that. And, yeah. you know, so sometimes having a lot of talent could be a bad thing. And, and, no, and again, not that we weren't a talented team because we were talented. And again, having Jamari yeah. and, and Ben to practice against us every day because they couldn't play, um, you know, having a bunch of those young kids like Nadir and Merv and Nico to just be there with a young mm -hmm. turn energy every day to just kind of like yep, keep yep. the shit going, not letting us get down. And um, even off the court, like having those young guys around was good for me as a senior because I was so over college and just so over all of it. So to have Nah and Ben and all of these guys yeah, happy they, about this shit all over yeah, again. Yeah, they came in with that that fresh energy. With, yeah, you know, happy to be kind of like yeah, ah, sure. yeah, it kind of made uh -huh. me like okay, cool, this is cool. I can I could do this, and then they put me in a different role. You know, I was a, a leader, so they were also watching us, and so um, that was definitely the best year of my life as far as a basketball player. Just as far as like experiencing that brotherhood, and um, I really got to you know be who I was and full aspect on and off the court as a leader vocal being a vocal guy and then just having my play show for me and um yeah that was a great year for me bro and uh again you being a huge part of that being my roommate and i also always talk about that 2010 year too Thanks. because you red shirt and i remember being good and and when i say good like like playing good in the sense of like i'm playing everything's going good for me um and then coming home to you and you being so positive all the time and so uppity all the time and mm -hmm. still having a smile on your face even being frustrated knowing like damn i I should be playing and could be playing i think that because again yeah. my sophomore year was my worst year it was the year that i thought i was should be doing more and he thought yeah now nah, we you you're good here we good with you hat right here and i would be complaining and then mm -hmm. i would go to the room and see you like playing the video games or up and you're happy and yeah, I can't complain to a <laughs> nigga who really life, supposed to man. be playing. Yeah, and no, 100%. I always tell people, 100%. bro, you were like the perfect person for me to be roommates with at that time in my life, bro. And then obviously, you know, going yeah. through shit like having kids at the same time, and you know, going through mm -hmm. life together. Um, I always say this, bro. You my you my favorite favorite person, especially in that in that situation, bro. We were Dang. like the perfect Dang, yin and yang, bro. So opposite, but 100%. perfect for each other, bro. And I and I appreciate you. Mm -hmm. Um, and I'm gonna get to the middle, but I really do love you and I appreciate you. Um, even just love moving too, forward bro. to like yeah. real life now, bro. Like helping me in my transition, allowing me to you know bunk with you and your family mm -hmm. while I maneuver my yeah. transition, bro. I'll never forget shit like that, bro. So um, no, again, no, just, and just I thank wouldn't you. <clears throat> wouldn't hesitate to do it again, man. Like you're my guy always for the rest of my life, man. Like. Blood couldn't make us any closer, so For you sure. know that we don't have to go go on more about it. But yeah, man, I definitely could. Sure. Uh, worse can't even explain, man. And you know. For sure, I know. Rock, you got some stuff, but I had to get that off my chest for the podcast world. Yeah. No, man. The only thing I got left is we got some chopping it up with Chuck. She's getting ready to hop on right now. Mama mad because it's past bedtime, but she's gonna hop on anyway. So I just gave her the signal, <laughs> so she should be on any minute. Over Chuck's here now. Whoa, whoa, hey, Chucky. What's going on? How you doing? Good. All right, you ready? Welcome to Chopping It Up with Chuck. We are going to play Would You Rather. <clears throat> the rules are simple. I'm going to ask you a question, and you have to choose an answer. And if you don't, there's a little twist. There will be a punishment. That punishment is an up-and-down basketball court. You must video it, post it, and tag the podcast. You ready to play? Would you rather? What's the punishment? Well, what just the, the, we just, we just yeah, got to run. The punishment? You have to run up and back. Oh, up and oh, back. Okay. And we got to record it and then tag the podcast. Down That's if back. we don't answer the question, though. Okay, cool. That's fair. That's fine. I used to, I used to do 22s before boot camp. Nice. Yeah. Light work. <laughs> That's easy work. <laughs> that was another story we left out. But <clears throat> Would you rather... Have whatever you are thinking appear above your head for everyone to see, or have the ability everything you do live stream for everyone to see. I would rather have. I would rather have everything I'm thinking shown above my head. <laughs> 
because I can come, I can almost control my thoughts opposed to having what I'm doing live streamed all the time. So what she said, Trav, I don't know if you heard it, she broke up, but she said, would you rather have everything that you're thinking appear above your head so everyone can see it or to have everything you're doing live streamed for everyone to see it or, do, or to see it, right, Chuck? Something like that? Yep. Yeah. Oh, for sure, everything above my head, for sure. <clears throat> yeah. I kind of um, got the powers to control control what I think, too, as well. Yeah. Yeah, I'm going with above my head. That I don't more. think about much anyway besides gambling and sports. So. <laughs> I ain't nothing going on up there. <laughs> Bunch of crickets. Oh, that's funny. Would you rather be married to a 10 with a bad personality or a 5 with an amazing personality? <laughs> that is dumb. Chet, why are Can you we asking fix that us questions like this? Well, I'm the only I'm one gonna, that's, that's not an married easy one. here. So that's I'm an easy answer. one for I'm me mar- because I'm married, I'm married to a, a ten, 10 with a great personality. <laughs> with a great man, personality. Ain't hey, that right, it. Travis? Yes, we, we got, got the only two. We got the change. only two. Ain't, ain't nothing I would change. I got lucky. Bro. Great answers, I'm bro. Good. Great answers because I was sending this straight to the Y. There's only two. There's only two in the United States. Travis got one and yeah. I got the other. I got one, Gosh. man. It's a wrap for you guys. Know what so, uh, <laughs> so I can't answer so, that, Ty Chuck. Sean? I'm, I'm going to – I will run and I'll send it to you. I will leave this for the married guys. <laughs> Would you rather get a suitcase that has $10,000 or – a suitcase that has a 50-50 chance to be $1,000 or $50,000. So guaranteed 10000 Guaranteed 10000 or risk it to try to win 50000 but you can end up with only 1000 All right, so yeah, so you either get a suitcase that has 10000 in it or you... I'm taking the chances, man. I'm taking the chances. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a gambler for sure, so I'll, I'll rather get the fifty. Or and you, if not, I still got a I'm thousand, a so I can flip that and make the ten. Nothing. Either way, I'm I'm, le- I'm leaving with more than I came with. Either right. way. Either way. I'm taking <laughs> yeah, the chances. Yeah, I'm gonna take the I'm gonna take yeah, the chances. I'm, you know Chuck. me, I'm. Ge- yeah, you know me, I'm, I'm gambling. Let's chance. go for it. Would you rather have a five minute conversation with your past self or a one minute conversation with your future self? Oh, hey. five minutes with my past self for sure. Yeah, I would. I would only five minutes two, with my honest. past self would change the rest of your life, right? <laughs> yeah, oh my yeah. goodness, that, that yeah. Is, yeah. Yeah, yeah sure. that should have changed everything. Yeah, for sure. Five minutes with my know, past man. life. I kind of want to see what's going on in the future. <laughs> Not me. I'm gonna no. go look at some lotto numbers from like <clears throat> 1992, and I'm gonna give them to my past self, and then give them to my mom. Or something like that. I'll go back and change history, bro. With a five minute talk no, same. to myself. The shit that the shit that I know now. Same. If I knew then, if I knew at eighteen or fifteen yeah. or twenty two, uh-huh. I'd be Elon Musk out this bitch. Same. <laughs> Man, y'all are crazy. I wanna know what's going on in the future. Nah, nah, I mean, you gonna find out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You'll find out. Oh man. You're going to find out in two seconds. Chuck, what else you got for us? That's all? All right. That concludes this episode. We're chopping it up with Chuck. That was a good one. I like that last one a lot, Chuck. That's it. Thank you. Now, go to bed. It's past your bedtime. It is past your bedtime. (laughs) Thanks, Chucky. Bye. Um, Yeah, for sure. Trav, you got anything? I know you said we forgot to talk about a boot camp story, a twenty two story. We got what you what you was what you was about to say? When you had to run before boot camp, we got in battle, oh, we got man. a football fight, all of this shit happened. I know we we could talk for days. It ain't a long story. It's just a short. <clears throat> now, were you on the team then when I had to run before boot camp? Uh, was that was it two thousand? It wasn't two thousand and thirteen. It might have been. It might have been your last year. I don't feel uh, like you was in. No, I don't remember. You was a good. You wasn't ever. In no, yeah, trouble. you were there because I remember the twins being. No, oh, no, but this. There, listen, then. hear me out. This. Yeah, the twins was there. There still, so you were definitely there. 
Uh, but no, I had went out, went to the Hawk, and uh, this sounds right. This Coach, sounds right. I went out past curfew, and uh, Coach Self comes in. Was it the day? Yeah, the day of practice. It was like, yeah, uh, uh, raise your hand if you if you didn't make curfew. And nobody <laughs> nobody raised their hand. I know I was out the night before. I'm like <laughs> looking around, you know, didn't say anything. He said, well, this is what we got here. <laughs> So cool, nonchalant. Like, yeah, right. so this is what we I got here. See this we got, we got, we got Trav clocking out of the Hawk at uh, one twenty-five, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking around like, how the hell he know this? Like, how did he know I was in the yeah, Hawk? Yeah, this way you found uh, out he knew everything. So huh? like, yeah, so this is what we gonna do before before boot camp. He need to run. Uh, I think it was like fifteen or twenty twenty twos. Before boot camp started, boot camp started what, like five forty-five or something like, like that. Yeah, 5:15? we gotta be dressed. We gotta be on the court like five fifty, five. Yeah, five forty-five. Yeah. yeah. So he was like, shit. he needed he, for, the, <laughs> for for the rest of the week, he got to do twenty to twenty twos before boot camp started. So I'm up an hour and a half on the court <laughs> running before they come in the gym. But anyways, I found out, out uh, Brendan. Yeah, light work, light work. And uh, yeah, one of it one of my Char? former teammates snitched on me, man. He, he told Char told on Char you. Char told me, man. Yeah, he told. He said I was at the hall. Yeah, I was. Man. I had a great time too. <laughs> hey, I ain't gonna lie. Travis probably more than anybody that I know or was on my team took full advantage of like college life. Like, like yeah. he he is yeah. the one that fully embraced college life, and I say that in the sense of like just partying, like frat shit, like you know. Again, he went to school here, so yeah, some of his I would high go, school like, the frat friends. Dances. I would do yeah, all like some of his high school friends would be like in frats and fraternities and stuff. So he had a different side of like Lawrence and just the ex- college experience than our group did, as far as like me, the twins. And most of the time is because we just didn't want to. Like if we wasn't doing it together, we wasn't doing it. And Trav yeah. had no problem branching off and doing certain things. So uh, he really fully experienced it. So. Mm-hmm. This motherfucker was out. He was active. He was very much active. And I remember, yeah, like, the I first three or four girls I met on campus, I met through Travis. And when I say through Travis, in the sense of, like, oh, you know Travis, right? I'm like, yeah, it's my teammate. Oh, yeah. I remember when he came to our school and did this. So I remember when we watched him play, and I was like, damn, for real? This nigga must be the man out here. That's all I kept thinking is he must be the oh, man goodness. out here. It helped being a local kid, man. That's all I got to say. Sure. It, it helped For a sure. lot. And like you said, your red shirt year, y'all wasn't traveling with us. So when we would go on the road. Yeah, yeah. Games, so my, my red shirt year was probably like, as far as like the college experience, it was the best year for me because I didn't have to travel. I didn't like flying. So whenever you guys were on the road, I was back home. I was in the bars with the college kids cheering you guys. I don't like, I'm them. So I was, I was getting the the like basketball experience of being a Jayhawk basketball player. But I also, when those guys on the road, I got the experience of just being a random student. So I, I got, like I said, the best of both worlds. Oh, and that yeah. year I got, I got better. Uh, and it, it just, it was a, a fun year, man. Uh, and he did yeah, an extra I year because he red time, shirted too. He had a time. Yep. 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 I ain't mad at it. But, um, again, bro, I appreciate you for giving us your time. Um, <clears throat> And thank you for coming to talk with us. Uh, yeah, no problem, I'm man. Good Thanks with for that. having me. Yeah, for, yeah no for problem, me. bro. This was good. Appreciate anytime, you. Anytime, anytime. I'll let you know when I'm in town, man. We can get together. Yeah, pull up on your boy, man. I missed you last week, and that was you cool. We got know. to see Mario. We got to see. Um, we got to see Merv. Uh, that yeah, was I good. Saw, I saw, I saw y'all on TV, man. Yeah, Heartbroken. I'm like, ah. I should be there. Yeah, man. That was good. But we got some good games coming up. I'm sure you'll slide back through. Um, holla at me, man. The last time, <clears throat> the only time I went out with you three, man, I wasn't right for like a week and a half, just by the, for the record. <laughs> Stay away from us, bro. Shit. We old, Blame bro. Time, that... Blaming time, man. <laughs> yeah. Like, we, we do shit like that. We do shit like that when we see each other once a year, bro. And so it'd be necessary, but... You know, Trav home yeah. right now with with, with the it's babies. Definitely necessary. You know what I'm saying? Trav home right now with the yeah. babies. I was talking about Pop on my last episode. 
Um, yeah, we dads, man. We dads doing dad shit, you know, enjoying the second part of our life because basketball took so much of the first part. Enjoying life, man. Respectfully, but, yep. you know, we are, we are, you know, embracing and enjoying the second half of our life, man. And we're doing it with smiles. We're doing mm-hmm. it gracefully. We look good doing it. We ain't oh, look like no sure. old ass. Hell yeah. Washed up niggas. We are good. <laughs> Not at all. You know, so, um, I'm happy about Living that. Living life and, and enjoying you know, it. Thanks for having me again. All right, thanks, Trev. We'll see you. That's all we got for you. We'll see you next time.